Welcome back to Queen the Greatest, a celebration of the outstanding songs, performances and achievements from the Queen's story so far. And of course, no celebration could possibly be complete without a look at Queen's biggest selling single, Another One Bites the Dust. Hey, hey, are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? In 1980, Queen began their second decade together with one of their biggest ever hits. And in true Queen fashion, it was with a style previously unfamiliar to their fans and originated from an unlikely source, with bassist John Deacon once again demonstrating his uncanny ability to write a monster hit. At the time, however, the band's faith in the song took a while to emerge. I'd always wanted to do something a little bit more that was more sort of disco, which was very uncool at the time. I mean, funk wasn't really in the vocabulary. John was pulling us strongly in that direction, a sort of funky direction. And John got Roger to play with tape all over his drums, which is exactly what Roger hated. Roger hated his drums being made to sound dead. I didn't really want to get into dance music. Um, it wasn't my thing. Another one bites the dust. Freddie got deeply into it. Freddie sort of sang it until he bled because he was so committed to making it sound the way John wanted it, which was like hardcore, I don't know what you would call it, but it's kind of more towards black music than white music. Michael came to several shows, I think, at the Forum in LA, and he loved Freddie. And he kept saying, you guys, you've got to put that song out. And I, I wasn't particularly enamored with it, so I said, no, you're kidding us, never a single. Another one bites the dust. By this time, Queen were masters at never shying away from a risk, so it was released and ultimately sold a staggering 7 million copies to become their biggest ever selling single. Adopted as an anthem of triumph and continually played at sporting arenas, particularly boxing matches, it gave the group their second US number one, remaining in the Hot 100 for 31 weeks and earning a Grammy nomination. As Brian recalls, it meant the band began the 80s in a position that 10 years previously they could only dream about. We kind of became the biggest group in the world at that moment. You know, it's, it's a fleeting moment because someone else will come and take over. But for that moment, we kind of owned the world. Another One Bites the Dust naturally featured on their Greatest Hits album released a year later. But interestingly enough, was also on their Greatest Hits 3 album, thanks to a 1998 top 10 remix featuring Wycliffe Sean. Repeat to the sound of the beat. Hey! Yo, I'm for the kids in the club that's ready to get bugged. Another One Bites the Dust. Or for the thugs with the burners that want to blast or Another one bites the dust And then again in 2006, another remix called Queen vs. The Miami Project reintroduced the song to yet another new generation of fans. Hey, let me get to do another one bites the dust Consequently, the popularity of this classic shows no sign of dimming, as demonstrated in May this year when it passed the incredible milestone of one billion streams on Spotify. But for many, the memory of Freddie, Roger, Brian and John letting loose on stage is where the song is really at its scintillating best. Your big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing. We 